7.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, New South Wales, Australia, on the 23rd of the 1st, 2019. Dr. Jason W. Morrison, how are you all going? I think many of you now are starting to get the idea that um, anything you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is going to lead you down a path that is deceiving, deceptive and ultimately leads to harm whether it be physical or mental i want to say that again anything you think you need to do which is a personal or organizational religious rule to make god happy or stop him from being sad will cause you to sin now if you watch my videos i am adamant about this and i've pushed it and pushed it to try and get through because even myself as a theologist struggle with maintaining the concept that there's nothing I need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And as soon as we start to think that there is, our psyche begins to change, even if we're not aware of it. Now, I'm going to try and use Philippians 2 just to show you that I'm not just picking books to suit an agenda of teaching because this is not an agenda it's a reality 99.9% .9 of people who are mixed up in religion think that there's something they need to do or not do to make God happy and stop him from being sad um, and it's leading them into all sorts of trouble this is where most or almost all religious trouble comes from the idea the belief that there's something you need to do or not do to make god happy or stop him from being sad now if we go to philippians 2 5 let this mind be in you now once you start speaking about things of the mind the human mind you're going into the psychological realm so let this psyche be in you which was also in christ jesus now that's coming from the previous verse which is um, the beginning of the chapter. Therefore, if any consolation, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, just here, the comfort of love. Comfort of love. Just want to say, a lot of religious people will put their religion before their love. I want to repeat that. A lot of religious people will put their religion, their organization, before their love. And this is a major sign proving that when we think there's something we need to do or not do to make Jehovah happy or stop him from being sad, then we begin to put religion or the organization before the people we're supposed to love. Because any concept that's based on loving the Lord your God with all your mind and with all your heart and with all your soul, which is an, an impossible concept, an impossible request, will drain your bank of love towards others around you. This is how the spiritual realm can deceive you. Whilst you're trying to impress God and every, everything to do with God by trying to put him first, which is an impossibility because there's too many other responsibilities going on in daily life anyway. And we haven't got the capability, we haven't got the capability of doing that anyway. Well, um, we begin then to neglect the immediate things around us, even though it may not seem that way on the surface. So the comfort of love gets replaced with the diligence of religion. I want to say that again. These people that think there's something you need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad replaces the comfort of love with devotion to the religion, devotion to the organization. And that's where a person puts themselves in a sphere of deception because they're trying to 
to accomplish something that is not there. Because you don't have to put God first. You don't have to um, do something or not do something to make him happy or stop him from being sad. Our consolation in the religious realm, in our relationship with God, is all-inclusive for time and eternity in Christ Jesus. Yes, if there is any consolation in Christ. So, if we don't understand what the consolation of Christ is, then we're going to use ourself to try and make God happy or stop him from being sad, which is going to deceive ourselves, harm the people around us, and undermine our ability to comfort one another in love. Whether it's... Um, because, see, religious people comfort one another based on their devotion to the religion or the organisation. As soon as somebody... Uh, wants to get on with their life and, and step back a little bit from things, it gets all wobbly and out of shape because then they, the person that's remaining devoted, over-devoted has a psychological mindset that thinks this person isn't making Jehovah happy or stopping him from being sad. And immediately they start to cut that people off. That's how shunning works. So our consolations in Christ... Our comfort of love is undermined by thinking there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And if there's and any fellowship of the Spirit... Now, look, a lot of these people don't know the Holy Spirit because they're forcing their religion through their works. The Holy Spirit flows with you as you go through your daily life. But people can't trust him enough to believe that I can get on with my life and know that he's enabling me and helping me and teaching me and guiding me without any effort of my, my own. If there's any affection and mercy. Now, affection and mercy, um, with the affection side of this, a lot of these people, and I'm going to wrap this up because we've run out of time. A lot of these people base, well, these people that think there's something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, their affections based on lust. And the lust is, is fortified by their thinking that what they're doing is impressing the divine, is impressing Jehovah. Their affection is not healthy. Because it's a prideful affection. It's an affection that's fueled by the fact that they think that what they're doing is or is not making God happy or stopping him from being sad. And that undermines mercy, doesn't it? Because the Jehovah Witnesses are worldwide known for their shunning. And, and um, the shunning has come in because of this deterioration through their teachings that you have to live by God's standards to make him happy or stop him from being sad. So there's really no joy in it, is there? Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Well, um, for the Jehovah Witnesses, their like-mindedness is nothing to do with Christ. Having the same love, being of one accord. Um, I don't think... For the most part, any religion or any person that's religious that puts their devotion to their organisation before the people around them, their family, know what love is. They've got it all muddled up because they're loving an invisible entity that doesn't expect that um, depth of devotion. The golden rule was not to love the Lord your God with all your mind and with all your heart and with all your soul, was it? The golden rule was to love your neighbour as yourself, but we struggle to do that, but we won't admit that. So being of one accord, they... See, the one accord in most of these religions that say there's something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is based on what the people in it are believing the other people are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, the other people are doing, to fulfill the standards of that organisation. So the one accord and one mind part goes straight out the window because um, 
It's based on effort and works. It's not based on personality and character and love. That's 10 minutes. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Um, bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watch it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.